So Bernie Sanders is a front runner for the Democratic nomination. If you remove Joe Biden from the polls, Bernie Sanders is the guy who is most likely to win the Democratic nomination, which means we have to play his theme music. There it is, Bernie Sanders' theme music, the old Soviet national anthem. Dude love the Soviet Union. I mean, back in 1988, was talking about their great social programs three years before the fall of the Berlin Wall. <laughs> what a wonderful dude Bernie, Bernie Sanders is. Well, Bernie Sanders voted also against the Born Alive, uh, bone Born After Abortion Infant Protection Act. But that wasn't all he did yesterday. He also appeared on CNN where he said a bevy of crazy things. So he was asked specifically if America would become socialist if he were elected. And he refused to say no. Because, of course, he wants America to be socialist. Now, the best part about Bernie Sanders is he says all the quiet parts out loud. So for a long time, he's been trying to maintain that socialism is really just Norway. Even though he used to hang out with, with the Chavistas, and even though he's a big fan of the Castros, and even though he loved the USSR, Bernie's new thing for the last 10 years has been, you know what's a great place? Forget about all those other communist socialist places. Let's talk about Scandinavia. Let's talk about Sweden. By the way, hilarious, the former prime minister of Sweden tweeted out about Bernie Sanders that Bernie Sanders knows nothing about our country and really doesn't know anything about politics. He, he, Bernie loves Sweden, so we don't love Bernie. In any case, Bernie was on CNN last night and he was asked, will America become socialist if you're elected? And he was like, well, maybe, kind of. This is the president. America will never be a socialist country. Will that hold true if you're elected president? If I am elected president, we will have a nation in which all people have health care as a right, whether Trump likes it or not. We are going to make public colleges and universities tuition free. We are going to raise the minimum wage to, uh, to a living wage of at least 15 bucks an hour. And whether Trump likes it or not, when I talk about human rights, you know what that also means? It means that our kids and grandchildren have the human right to grow up in a planet that is healthy and habitable. This is what we call avoiding the question. So will it be a socialist country? I will give you lots of nice things, and they will be things that you like, like pudding. Pudding is delicious. So, are you socialist, Senator? No, I just want things for all people. And this is one of my favorite rhetorical tricks. People say things like, so, are you like a communist? And you're like, if by communist you mean I am nice to puppies and pet them on the street, then yes, I am a communist. And you're like, no, that's not what I meant by communist. I meant like you want to nationalize all resources and take the profit margin out and, and really destroy the American economy. You're like, I thought you meant puppies. I like puppies. So Bernie didn't stop there. He was asked, how do you pay for all of this? And he said, well, all I will do is I will go to Jeff Bezos' house and then I will rob him. I believe that in a democratic, civilized society, health care, yeah, is a right. Making sure that our kids can get a higher education is a right. That we rebuild our crumbling infrastructure is a basic need. That's going to cost money. People say, where are you going to get the money? Where are you going to get the money? Amazon, owned by the wealthiest guy in the world, made $5 billion last year in profits. Anyone here know how much they paid in taxes? That's right. That's where we're going to begin getting the money. They are not paying zero in taxes. Every time you buy a product from Amazon, you are paying a sales tax. Every single time. They pay appropriate state taxes in every state in which they do business. But I love that. Uh, my favorite thing is when you have socialists and they say things like, they get so offended when you ask them how you're going to pay for things. Like, really offended. Like, yesterday, AOC was talking about, they're all, they're all asking me questions like, where am I going to get the money for this stuff? I mean, like, from the sky, hello? And then you had Kamala Harris doing the same thing. She was asked on CNN, you know, people say, where are you going to get the money for this, Senator Harris? And I say, don't worry about where we get the money. The question is how much benefit you're going to get from the money. Is it, okay, can we just, uh, enough of the avoiding the serious question. Where are you going to get the money? The answer is not Amazon.com. The answer for Bernie Sanders is 60% tax rates on everybody making above $60,000 a year. That's the actual answer for funding Bernie's nonsensical programs. He wants to raise tax rates on everybody, including the middle class. And if he were honest, he would just say that. But what's hilarious is he won't even acknowledge that that's the case in the countries that he loves most. So he'll say, I love all the social programs in Sweden. Sweden has great social programs. Well, how about their tax rates, Bernie? No, we don't talk about that around here. That's Amazon, Jeff Bezos. What demagogic nonsense. 
The good news is that Bernie wants to do universal preschool education so we can make sure that your kids are indoctrinated by Head Start programs. If you become president, will you support efforts to offer high quality, optional, publicly funded preschool for all Americans? Want a one word answer? Absolutely. Every dollar you invest in preschool education will be paid back many, many times. So we got a lot of work to do in education from higher education to preschool to improving our public schools as well. Again, he does play the same trick. Every dollar that you spend on public education will be returned to you manifold, plentifully. Wow. Okay, well, nonsense. Head Start is one of the great failures in American public education. It has been for years. It's a giant money pit. There's no evidence whatsoever that Head Start results in better educational outcomes for the kids who go to Head Start. You don't get money back just because you send your kids to a Head Start program or universal preschool or anything like that. Plus, if you actually want to do this, why not just give vouchers to parents and then they can pick the school they send their kids to? But Bernie would never do that. He wants government-run Head Start programs. You don't want parents actually choosing what to do with their kids. And he, it, it's just lies. I mean, Bernie, Bernie's big thing, social, the big thing about socialism is the giant lies that accompany it. So if you just take our giant government program and you, and you implement it, then magical gumdrops will fall from the sky. Everything will be just great. There's never been a downside to any massive government bureaucracy. We don't have to spend additionally. We can just tax people. We don't have to tax additionally. We can just go after the rich people. We don't have to worry about bureaucracy. We'll have the best bureaucrats you ever heard of. We don't have to worry about the history of socialism bankrupting countries and burdening economies and creating massive tax rates and and really undercutting the power of, of entrepreneurship. We don't have to worry about any of those things. It'll all be great. So here's Bernie doing that routine on Medicare for all. Will these people be able to keep their health insurance plans, their private plans no. through their employers if there is a Medicare for all program that you endorse? What they will what will change in their plans is the color of their card. So instead of having a Blue Cross Blue Shield card, instead of having a United Health Insurance card, they're going to have a Medicare card. That Medicare card will allow them both to go to any doctor that they want. If they're going to the doctor, they're happy. Any hospital they want. But you know what else? They're not going to be paying any private insurance premiums. Okay, this is completely insane. If Medicare for All were a thing and you abolish private insurance, you would not be able to walk into any hospital you want and get any care you want. They have waiting lists. They have rationing. They have shortages. This is true in the NHS in Great Britain, for example, which is the best example of a nationalized healthcare system. All of the things that people like about Medicare, generally they like about Medicare Advantage, which is a program where you're buying supplemental insurance on top of your Medicare. People on Medicare right now are being cut out from their doctors right now because reimbursement rates are too low. What he is saying is just not true. It's just not true. It's on the order of if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. When Bernie Sanders says, nothing will change except the color of your card. Well, that and you won't be able to go to the doctor you want to go to. You won't be able to get a surgery on demand. You won't be able to go to the doctor you've normally attended. You won't get the same medical care. You'll have to wait in line. You know, but aside from that, it'll be exactly the same. Exactly. Aside from all the things being different, it'll be exactly the same. It's like my favorite joke as a child. What is this? What's the similarity between a, a cow and a plum? They're both purple except for the cow. Okay, it's the same thing with Medicare for all. What's the difference between Medicare for all and your current health insurance? They're exactly the same, except for they're completely different. Ah, oh, Bernie Sanders. Okay, but the best of Bernie Sanders is yet to come. So... Here's the thing about Bernie. The front runner for the Democratic Party refused on national television last night to call Nicolas Maduro, the dictator of Venezuela, a dictator. Because Bernie has a long, again, he said the quiet part out loud, which is that Democrats kind of like socialism in Venezuela. A lot of Democrats were cheering for Hugo Chavez like 10 years ago. And now they're very, now, Hugo, before Hugo Chavez was kind of like the new, he was like the Scandinavian countries. He was the hot new socialist thing. And then everything fell apart and they're eating dogs and Maduro's shooting his own citizens. And it's like, well, I guess that one was, a. I guess we picked a bad example there. You know, sure we picked a bad example in Russia, China, Cuba, half of South America. Sure, sure we picked some bad examples there. But in reality, the new best country is going to be Venezuela. And then they're like, oh no, you, sorry, scratch that. The new best country Sweden. Sweden, we've chosen. So here's Bernie Sanders forgetting for a second and going back to Venezuela's kind of great, except for the death and destruction and despair and starvation. Except for that, it's pretty awesome. Why have you stopped short of calling Maduro of Venezuela a dictator? He, I, I think it's, it's fair to say that the last election was undemocratic. Uh, 
but there are still democratic operations taking place in that country. The point is, what I am calling for right now is uh, internationally supervised free elections. And I do find it interesting that Trump is very concerned about what goes on in Venezuela. My record is to be concerned about democracy all over the world. Okay, well, no, your, your record is not that, actually. You were in favor of the USSR and Cuba, so no, that's actually not your record, being in favor of democracy all over the world. As far as why we don't support democracy in Saudi Arabia, it's for the same reason that supporting democracy in Hamasistan was a bad idea. The worry in Saudi Arabia is that if you actually were to have a vote, that the Muslim Brotherhood would then be in charge of Saudi Arabia and their oil supplies. Like, democracy is not always con consonant with liberalism, but in Venezuela, it certainly is. And so you get theoretically the best of both worlds, a democracy in which a socialist dictator is overturned. That's good. Why is he opposing it? The answer is he's opposing it because this guy happens to be a socialist. I mean, because you could ask the same question in reverse. Why is it, Bernie, that you're in favor of democratization in Saudi Arabia, but not in Venezuela? There's only one reason. I just gave you the geopolitical reason why there's a, an actual rationale for the Saudi royal family remaining a dictatorship. Okay, and that's a very hardcore political reason. It, it's, it's not a neocon position that every country needs to be immediately democratized because there are consequences to democratization. When they tried to hold a vote in Gaza Strip in 2005, Hamas was elected, an actual terrorist group. Elections do not necessarily guarantee liberalism. But in Venezuela, the good news is they kind of would. Like actual open elections in Venezuela would certainly be preferable to a socialist dictatorship, but apparently not according to Bernie. There is a pretty stark contrast, by the way, between the Bernie Sanders perspective on Venezuela and the perspective of the senator from Connecticut for, for the Democrats who said yesterday that he was very afraid of, the, of, of Trump when it came to Venezuela, but not so much Maduro. There's a big contrast between that and the position of the administration. Here is Vice President Mike Pence yesterday saying that Maduro has to go. What brings us together today is the recognition by all the nations gathered here that Nicolas Maduro is a usurper with no legitimate claim to power. And Nicolas Maduro must go. Okay, so that's a, that's a very different position. By the way, worth noting, yesterday there were journalists who were arrested and harassed by the Venezuelan governor, Jorge Ramos, who you will recall once yelled at President Trump when President Trump was, was first elected. He yelled at him and then President Trump said, I'm not going to answer your questions. He refused to listen and then he was removed from the tent. And people were like, that's fascism. That's a crackdown on the press. Okay, here's what happened to Jorge Ramos and his Univision team yesterday in Venezuela. They were actually detained. They were legally detained in Caracas, the capital of Venezuela, after asking Nicolas Maduro questions he did not like and showing him a video of people eating from the trash. They were actually arrested and put in jail. Okay, that's fascism. That's a crackdown on the press. I mean, the press treated as though being a member of the press in the United States is a great risk. The great heroes of the journalisming press here in the United States. It actually takes some guts to be in Venezuela right now. If you want to talk about the actual oppression of journalists, you might want to look to some of the socialist dictatorships that you love so much here on the left. Turns out that those places very likely to crack down on journalists in a way that Donald Trump never has and never is going to. So that is pretty astonishing stuff. That's pretty astonishing stuff. Uh, again, uh, the, the, the weird, odd defensiveness that so many people on the left have about Venezuela is really telling. It's really telling. I'm not defensive about the human rights violations about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a terrible place. Lots of human rights violations run by people who are, who are fully ensconced and cracking down on their own population. It's really ugly and it's really bad. And the only question is, would the alternative be worse? In Venezuela, there's no question the alternative would be better. And yet there are members of the hardcore left in the Democratic Party who are still trying to manipulate so that Maduro has a chance to remain in power undemocratically. And then they talk about how, how much they are worried about President Trump. It's, it's kind of astonishing.